ValveTime.net. Hi, and welcome to the Valve Time News. Each week, we'll bring you the biggest talking points regarding Valve and the community. Now, the news. After 48 days worth of crowdfunding, the prize pool for the International 2014 finally reached $10 million this past Friday. This significant new milestone means that all planned stretch goals have been surpassed, and that TI4 now features a larger prize pool than the previous top five eSporting events combined, including the three previous internationals and two of Riot's League of Legends World Championships. Since there is still well over two weeks until the main event is set to begin on July 18th, it remains to be seen whether Valve will choose to introduce even more stretch goals to promote further support. While we wouldn't put it past them, it doesn't seem entirely likely given how slow the prize pool's growth has now become, as it has only managed to reach around 30,000 to 40,000 per day over the past few weeks. Regardless of whether or not the prize pool climbs any higher, the Dota 2 fans at Valve time, which can be more or less summarized as Glenn and Nick, tell me they're highly anticipating the start of the tournament as the amount of great talent and money involved should make it quite the event. With all of the Compendium Awards now unlocked, Valve are trying to get as many as possible added into the game before the tournament begins later this month. On Monday of this week, the overflowing Compendium update introduced four new previously unlocked stretch goal rewards. They include new rowboat and sailboat styles for the Lieutenant Squawkins Courier, the Mini Pudge Courier, three separate weather effects, and 25 chat emoticons. The extra styles for the Lieutenant Squawkins and Mini Pudge Courier can be unlocked by leveling up the player's compendium, while all chat emoticons and weather effects are provided to all compendium owners as standard regardless of their level. The update also introduced a Live Rewind, a new dynamic replay system which allows commentators or spectators to pause, rewind, and replay events within live matches, making it even easier than ever to keep up to date with currently in-progress competitive games. To learn more about the overflowing compendium update for Dota 2, head on over to the official changelog or the patch announcement page. If you're going to be attending the International 2014, you'll probably want to take a look at the new ticketing FAQ released onto the Dota 2 blog earlier this week. The page features some helpful information regarding how to receive your ticket, where the key arena is located, and when it opens and closes. Anyone planning on heading to the event should definitely check it out, while everyone else can probably give the page a miss. Instead, those of you not able to attend the event might be more interested in the Pub Stomp page, which details how various local Pub Stomp events will be hosted at locations around the world. Like last year, Pub Stomps will be hosted by willing members of the community at various predetermined locations. If you're looking to spectate the event live with other Dota fans, it might be worth keeping an eye on the Pub Stomp page to check if any local events are going to be held in your area. Links to both the Pub Stomp page and the ticketing FAQ will be made available in the video description alongside relevant links for every other topic we're going to be discussing this week. While the summer sale has now concluded, its final days involve some interesting and pretty funny drama in regards to the summer adventure minigame. After Reddit users forged an alliance to ensure every team won twice over the course of the 10-day event, Team Red betrayed the others and broke their promise on day 6 before dominating the opposing teams for a further two days. On day 9, Team Pink had clearly had enough, quite literally flipping the table for the next two days. In total, hundreds of thousands of in-game items have been found, so it's safe to say this year's minigame has been extremely successful, despite the drama. Every Steam user who entered into a team has been awarded with a team badge displaying how many total points that user contributed. Given the success of the past two minigames, we anticipate Valve will have something else planned for this year's holiday sale, so make sure you're ready for that. On Wednesday, a new blog post released to the Counter-Strike Global Offensive website detailed how several of the game's most recent new weapon additions have changed player purchasing decisions since their introductions. Several pie charts included in the post show how the USPS, the M4A1S, and the CZ-75A weapons have changed purchasing choices over a period of months since their inclusion, showing how the CSGO's metagame dynamically changed as players became more attuned or skilled with the new guns. The example of the CZ-75A pistol is particularly interesting as it shows how purchasing shifts only really become truly noticeable after a few months, unlike the immediate increase in popularity one might expect from new content. As you would imagine, Valve have been using this data to further fine-tune the in-game balance of CSGO, and they aren't exactly happy that the CZ-75 has become the most popular pistol, since the gun is currently reducing weapon variety rather than increasing it. Expect to see some nerfs of the CZ-75A in next week's patch.
While it hasn't quite been the busiest week for official Valve news, the community was on hand to introduce a slew of new content. At the front of our pack, our friends over at TF2Maps.net were busy organizing some exciting new contests this past week. On Thursday, Frozen, no, not that, Frozen, revealed the Aliens vs. Mercs theme for the site's upcoming 11th major mapping contest, which is now underway until October 27th, 2014. The contest, which is sponsored by Ronin, features an impressive $500 first prize for the individuals who create the best map, which concludes with the destruction of an alien mothership. The contest is not related in any way to Valve's own upcoming moon-based map, but we're still excited to see how many interesting or unique scenarios the community can conjure up. If you can't wait for the end of the contest in October, the Aliens theme also applied to the 72-hour summer mapping contest which took place earlier this weekend. The contest concluded on Monday afternoon at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and is currently being followed by a two and a half week period of voting. We were going to talk about the contest as it was underway, but I was a few days late recording the script, forcing Nick to change the script more than once. <laughs> uh, anyway, if anything we've mentioned here has piqued your interest, check out the official announcement posts over on the tf2maps.net website. On Saturday, source filmmaker animator Harry101UK released Game of Turrets, an aptly named crossover between Portal and the HBO TV series Game of Thrones. The minute and a half video is short and sweet, so be sure to take a look if you're interested in finding out what the TV show's opening theme would sound like if it were sung by Aperture's Turrets. It would appear that crossovers are once again the flavor of the month as YouTube user STBlackST uploaded a new video this past week known as Hat Dogs. As the name might suggest, the SFM short features a rather clever crossover between TF2 and Ubisoft's Watch Dogs. It, too, is short, sweet, and very well made, so go ahead and check it out if that kind of crossover interests you. While the community was busy making various crossovers, we were preoccupied finishing up episode 9 of Valve Time's Top 5. Our previous episode got us thinking about how music regularly plays a major role in defining great gaming moments, so we decided to take a look at what we feel are the best soundtracks in Valve's content library. We explore a whole bunch of different songs from games both new and old, and hopefully we'll manage to introduce some viewers to soundtracks they previously might not have been aware of. It seems like a bunch of you may have missed the episode, so feel free to check it out if you have yet to watch it. Don't forget to leave a comment to suggest future topics for our top 5 and for our other Valve Time series as we're always looking for cool new ideas. And that brings us to the end of another week of Valve News. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. If you enjoy our content, feel free to share our videos with your friends and to rate our Dota 2 announcer pack positively over on the Steam Workshop. Thanks for watching and bye for now.